Western states of America are facing the worst drought in 12 centuries. NASA recently shared this satellite image on Twitter that sort of blew everybody's mind. It's a picture of Lake Mead in July of 2000. And this is what it looks like today. Right beneath this tweet is this comment. The end is coming. It's not a conspiracy. It's climate change. I'm not sure about the end, but the anonymous chicken might be right in a way because things aren't looking too bright for the people living here. Just take a look at farmers in California. They're being forced to leave their lands idle because they don't have enough water. The farming sector lost a billion dollars and along with it, 9,000 people lost their jobs. Meanwhile, officials are enforcing water restrictions in residential and business spaces. It may seem like a small domestic change, but they simply have no choice. Because if they don't, they probably won't see any water when they turn on their taps in the future. It's that bad. The water crisis is at a critical level, approaching probably catastrophic levels. This drought is not giving any signs of ending. And it's not just California. It's almost every other state in the Western region. This drought is worth looking into because guess how officials work out solutions? By relying on laws that were made over a hundred years ago. For the first time in history, the US government announced a water shortage in the Colorado River in 2021 because its two main reservoirs were drying up. The first is Lake Mead bordering Arizona and Nevada that NASA tweeted about. And the second is Lake Powell bordering Utah and Arizona. These are the largest and second largest reservoirs in the US in terms of capacity, but it's been a while since they were full. Lake Mead stands at 27% of its capacity. That's alarming because about 75% of water from the lake goes towards irrigation for crops that makes up nearly 60% of the food grown in the United States. And right beneath Lake Mead is the Hoover Dam that supplies hydroelectric power to 1.3 million people across Nevada, Arizona, and California. As we were writing this story, the water level stood at 1,042 feet. But if the water level falls below 895 feet, the dam turbines will simply stop. This is what the dam looks like in person. These washed out colors are called bathtub rings and they represent exposed areas that were once underwater. This isn't an isolated incident. If we follow the Colorado River upstream, you see the same pattern happening here in Lake Powell. We're in the 23rd year of a drought. The basin's been generating about 20% less runoff than it had last century. But the greater concern is that the Colorado River system provides water for 40 million people in the Western United States. Lake Mead and Lake Powell aren't just reservoirs in the Colorado River. They're an important part of the river basin that stretches nearly 250,000 squared miles across Southwestern America. The Colorado River originates in the Rocky Mountains and flows through the Grand Canyon and drains into the Gulf of California in Mexico. This river is 1,400 miles long and is managed by the US Bureau of Reclamation, a federal agency that oversees water resource management in the country. This river has so many laws and guidelines and compacts surrounding it that it's called the Law of the River. The most important of them is the Colorado River Compact of 1922 which was designed to help states downstream with shortages by splitting the basin in two halves. The upper basin with Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming, and the lower basin covering Nevada, Arizona, and California. In 2020, the Bureau of Reclamation declared the Colorado River at a tier one shortage. Think of these shortages as an indication of water level that the states have to pay attention to. The bigger the number, the higher the water cuts. In June of 2022, the basin states were brought together and asked to come up with a plan to reduce water usage from the river by at least 25%. But here's the problem. Most of the river's water supply originates in the upper basin, whereas the highly developed areas in the lower basin are the ones that consume the most water. And this has sparked a huge conflict between the upper and lower basin states. Lower division states have been using their full entitlement and the upper division states have not. So there's frustration in the upper division states that they were gonna get shorted before they ever met their potential. They thought they had this entitlement to use additional water and now it's looking like they'll never be able to use that water. 
people are looking to California, which uses the majority of water to start taking significant cuts on the river. And there's a lot of finger pointing, who should be doing what? And there's been a lot of negotiations, but no resolution to that call for action. While these states were fighting and scrambling to come up with a formula to manage the drought, the lower Colorado basin reached a tier two shortage. Arizona is set to take the biggest hit as it's gonna face a 21% decrease in water allocation from the Colorado River. The worst hit are the farmers. We already saw how farmers in California are not cultivating their lands due to the drought. They're now surviving by pumping groundwater from wells, which isn't healthy in the long run. We own the land and we own the water. We don't want people telling us what to do. Even the big corporations, they will. If they run out of water, they'll go out of business. Farmers from these states are requesting hefty compensation to counter the loss that they're faced to bear. But the weirdest thing that we found when researching this video is that the most grown crop in the US is grass. Yep, a 2012 study showed that the Great American Lawn, a status symbol for suburban America, uses an astronomical amount of water. Well, Americans just can't afford it anymore. In Southern California, officials imposed a restriction on outdoor watering by limiting it to one day a week. Whilst in Nevada, they're actually paying people to remove water-intensive lawns. In Las Vegas, a state law has mandated that all non-functional turf grass to be removed by 2027 to save an estimated 9.5 billion gallons of water annually. Ooh, these numbers. Grass uses a lot of water. A few cities in Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah have placed similar restrictions. The Santa Monica administration has invested 200 million US dollars in water recycling, water treatment facilities, and restoration of contaminated basins. This is to ensure that groundwater doesn't get depleted and it reduces dependency on water from Northern California and the Colorado River. But lawmakers in these states do see a potential glimpse of hope. They now have a small share of the recently passed climate bill. $4 billion has been allocated as drought relief, so states can work on mitigating the water crisis in the West. Will $4 billion be enough? Hard to know. It's certainly a huge step in, in the right direction because it's a big incentive and a lot of these farmers are going to need to be compensated to take these steps. Remember what the anonymous chicken said? It's not a conspiracy, it's climate change. Well, we've established clearly that it isn't a conspiracy, so let's talk about climate change. In Western states, farms and cities receive water from rivers and reservoirs that are replenished by snow that melts way up in the mountains. But in the past few decades, less precipitation has led to poor snowfall. As a result, rivers don't have enough water during the spring and summer. To make things worse, there are two extreme types of climatic events that fuel droughts in this region. One is when high precipitation leads to excess rains and the water runs off before it could be accessed in the summers. The second is when warmer temperatures cause higher evaporation in a short span of time and makes the land incredibly dry. It comes to a point where it simply can't hold water due to these extreme climatic patterns. The perfect example is in the relationship between wildfires and droughts. It's pretty straightforward. The drier the temperature, the higher the instances of wildfires. And with prolonged droughts and periods of dryness, you face more wildfires. It's a vicious cycle that affects not only surface water, but groundwater reserves as well. So you have states like California, which rely on groundwater, have found themselves struggling to sustain themselves. You can see this for yourself. Let's go to the US Drought Monitor's website and head to the comparison slider under maps. Over the past two decades, the West and Southwest regions have gone from dry to extreme and exceptional droughts. The United States spends over a billion dollars every year to suppress wildfires. And in the past two years alone, the number doubled from 2.3 billion in 2020 to $4.4 billion in 2021. December 30th of last year, there was a Marshall fire in Colorado, not too far from where I live, uh, burned a thousand homes. End of the year, winter devastated an entire community there. So huge impacts. Uh, there's been catastrophic wildfires throughout the West and they seem to be getting worse every year. 
given that we know we can't predict climate first of all and we know that frequency in which disasters hit us are increasing are we remotely prepared and what steps are being taken for it in general terms i do think that within the basin there's growing recognition of the impacts of of climate change some of the states have governors who are reluctant to use those words but are willing to talk about hotter drier climate so there's recognition that that's the condition we're in and steps need to be taken Western states can't exist without the Colorado River. That's a hard truth because 70 to 80% of the water from the river goes towards supporting a $15 billion agricultural economy. While people and businesses have to make drastic changes on a day-to-day -day basis, the US government is left with a monumental task of making this work in the long run. I I still can't really wrap my head around the fact that they're working with information and decisions that were made a hundred years ago. Is there a way in how the basin states can possibly make this work? What we found and what I found in working on this for a quarter of a century is that uh, it's much easier to work within the confines of the compact, which has shown itself to be quite flexible rather than trying to start over because starting over would just lead to years of new negotiations and we need a solution right now. We don't have years to renegotiate anything. The coming few years are crucial for the United States. The country in itself isn't underwater stress, but the moment you take a look at things from a country level, you realize that the people and officials in the West and Southwestern states can't simply afford to walk away from the problem. NASA posted a photo of Lake Mead and there was a tweet underneath it from the anonymous chicken that said, the end is coming. It's not a conspiracy, it's climate change. What are your thoughts on that? So I've been working on this for 25 years and if I didn't think there was hope, then I'd be in a different field or working on a different resource problem. So for me, the fact that these various different water users have come up with incredibly novel and productive agreements over the past 25 years gives me hope that we can continue to move forward.